Hello, everybody. My name's Andrea Gregson. Thanks so much uh, to Ula and Leanne and Mara Josie for inviting me to come today. I'm really thrilled to be here, and it's great to see so many people. And I am the last speaker, and I hope that you're still got some energy uh, left because there's been so many wonderful things that have been spoken today. Really inspiring. Um, so, uh, I first met Gustav in March 2013 through Ula because um, I work as a senior lecturer in fine arts at University of Creative Arts in Farnham. And uh, we invited him to speak to the students, to the fine arts school. And it was a really kind of seismic moment for, for us and for me personally because at the end of the um, talk, he sort of turned around and made a direct appeal to everybody. Very calmly, he asked, what are you going to do about extinction? So at that moment, the students, me, everybody was very sort of quiet. Uh, this question, our discussion, his openness was quite profound. So my talk is going to focus on um, how this initial meeting led to several collaborations over the next two years, from 2013 to 2015, to realise the Facing Extinction Conference at Farnham, to curating to shows of uh, mass media today and yesterday at James Hockey Gallery and Herbert Reed Gallery, two, our two university galleries um, at UCA, and co-curating Remember Nature in 2015. I'll also discuss a little bit my, about my own artwork um, which you know I'm kind of doing alongside lecturing as well. So um, if you have a little look at the image on the screen there, this print is was used for the facing extinction publicity. So Gustav said to uh, to me and to uh, to my colleague at the time that he would like to have an image of a lion for the facing extinction conference. And I I instantly remember that at home I had um because uh, my partner's Danish I we had a book. Um, uh, by a zoologist called um, Ingvald Lieberkind from uh, 1939. We had it at home. It was called Animal Kingdom Mammals. So I looked for the chapter about lions and I found this page of stamps and immediately it just resonated with me with its layers of meaning, extinct stamps, countries and African lions and dangers use, and also using the idea of a, an, a, the lion as an emblem of identity. And Gustav liked the image and he kind of wanted to work with it. So he drew, uh, this, is this is pre Gustav, so this is in the book. Um, so he drew a diagonal line to strike through the copy, like a mark, kind of an act of defiance. And one of the first meetings in the studio was about the idea of running a conference to highlight man made extinction. He was keen to start something with us at UCA to capture the world. I mean, some of these things I'm writing down here are kind of paraphrasing what Gustav said because I was making a lot of notes. And because uh, that was the way that you know we could sort of work together and figure out how we would do it. So, um, in Gustav's words, each sector of society to reduce extinction. The process of the conference was to activate discussion, ethics, <laughs> philosophy. And Gustav asked, "How do we move people emotionally?" And I didn't know at that stage. It was quite difficult. <laughs> um, so things moved really fast. By the 30th of April. Uh, Gustav and Ulla meeting him in the, in the studio, them in the studio. Uh, we talked about how we should send shockwaves from the campus to the world. Small ripples moving out from um, Farnham, which is actually a small town in Surrey, just outside London. So kind of the idea of that was a kind of a difficult thought. Um, the conference and the, in the way that the conference could monitor a discussion. Meeting Gustav in June later that year, articulated uh, Gustav's vision for the conference. So here is another kind of um, par my paraphrasing of what he said that day. Looking he was looking to invite speakers with challenging energy, speakers with genuine experience, people who are committed. He also wanted a responsive and responsible audience. And Gustav was clear that he didn't want, so here are the things he didn't want. He didn't want it to be an academic exposition. He, didn't, he wanted to avoid a scientific conference. Avoid being preached at. We don't want nihilistic speakers without hope. It's about doing something even though there is no promise of success. The attempt is important. The taking of a stand against calamity, pushing forward, reducing numbers of species, tampering with nature. The conference must develop in order to save nature. Such a huge kind of responsibility I felt kind of bearing down on, the, on, the, on our team, the fine art team. So then later in October uh, 23rd, 
13, Gustav proposed an exhibition of his work before the conference in the James Hockey Gallery. So here you can see an image of the students um, putting his work together. He wanted it to be uh, about developing momentum. So Gustav said, the show should be useful so people could become engaged. It should emphasize the dangerous environment, events of life and death that can lead to extinction. Gustav proposed we made a new version of mass media today and yesterday. He talked about the act of the university community collecting thousands of newspapers about power from below. This, he said it was also about extracting knowledge to subvert power, which was kind of you know, a big part of like, the way that we did this. I felt like we had to give it that um, we had to collect in the right way, but it was very difficult because a lot of people don't read newspapers anymore. They use their tablets yeah, on the screen. So this collection had to be a gradual accumulation of our waste and effort, and that it could be spiritual. This was something he kind of stressed. For me, this was my conscience. How do I galvanize the university to collect papers? How do we collect so many thousand? Um, and especially after Gustav saying, we don't need big machines to move papers. It's information from below. So, um, so this is an image from the James Hockey Gallery. Um, working closely with the curator at the gallery, Richard Hilton, we curated the show as an ambitious reworking of the seminal work. He talked about how we could seize the chance for students to exhibit their work. So we ran a parallel show of Gustav's, alongside Gustav's show uh, to take part. He wanted them to have fun, and that was really a big part of this, is that um, the students could actually create a new piece of work in relation to the to the actual piece in the show. And it, their work was all around the campus, so it was a really great sort of moment. The, the private view had an incredible atmosphere. It was charged, staff and students pleased to have the work on the campus. And if you go um, to the Facing Extinction website, you can find the, I don't know if anyone's seen that, but there's a film which was made on that night by one of our film students. And he, t he talked very freely about uh, the weight of history and his kind of thinking about Walter Benjamin. It was re it's a really nice film, so do what, have a look at that. Um, so later in June, uh, when we were talking about the Facing Extinction Conference, one of the key questions was, what role can art and design play to halt destruction in nature? Um, we were really inspired by all Gustav's manifestos and Diaz and um, collaborat his collaborative actions. I'm working with um, Gustav and Ulla and Leanne, the fine art team, and curator Rose Lejeune to create a program of speakers and artists, scientists, academics, and designers. Um, the year before, Gustav had said, what can we do? The conference is an appeal to confront the world which is deteriorating. Speak about it, oppose the direction. We have to face the possibility that we will not halt extinction. So... Um, I think I'm a little bit behind with my images here. This is actually in the corridor of um, the university with some student work. And then this is the, the conference on campus in June 7th and 8th, 2014. Okay, so this image here is um, John Fanshawe. Uh, talking about uh, the plight of birds in um, seabirds, in particular albatross and tuna fishing. So we had a kind of range of people that would cover all of these subjects. Um, we were talking that the species loss and climate change and extinction um, was coming out of uh, Gustav's idea of ethics into aesthetics. That was the thing about what can the art world do about these ideas and, and how, how do artists and designers make changes. Um, so what we, I have here a copy of, uh, maybe I can get some copies, but I have a, a copy here of the programme over the two days. And what we did was we put it into four panels. So um, on Saturday, we, we, we had a text by Yoko Ono. She sort of sent us a text and one of our students read that out. It was very empowering, actually, for that particular student and also very difficult. Um, we had a, a panel on technology and resources. Um, and there we had Professor Peter Head, founder of the Ec Ecological Sequestration Sequest Trust, Dr. Joe Ravitz, co-director of the Centre for Urban and Regional Ecology, Professor Martin Charter, director of the Centre for Sustainable Design, and Fran Edgeley from Assemble, a design and architecture collective. Um, it's very interesting sort of panel discussions as well. In, in the lunch and the breakout times, um, we had student work 
and we had uh, Kennard Phillips had their, uh, a reconstruction of their installation, which they'd shown, I think, in Canary Wharf, of Cafe of Equivalence. Um, there, was, there was loads of opportunities for us to kind of talk with each other beyond the conference in, in, in the lecture theatre. Um, so this is a piece of student work, um, which we had, a, a, as I said, quite a lot of those pieces lying around, uh, were sort of placed in the campus. So in the afternoon, we had a panel of global systems, food and water, and, and there Magnus Irving presented a film, Coral Reef. Who's, he's an artist and a diver, uh, and his film was from Indonesia. Uh, Gustav Metzger, he, he, I read out his presentation, which was about um, the drop on a hot plate. Uh, and Michael Paulin, architect and director of exploration, and Marie, uh, Maria Arkeo, artist who's working with plastics in the ocean. Very interesting panel. Um, in the evening, I mean, maybe I shouldn't go through all the detail of this, but in the evening we had, um, we got a group of performance artists to create an event, and, and it was really long. It, it, I think people got very tired. I think we tired everybody out, but it was good. It was a sort of a good energy. So we had uh, Ellie Harrison, Carl Gent, Simon Watt, Matthew de Cassaint, Girardeur, and Kennard Phillips. They, they created a kind of demo talk on the stage. The next day, um, was climate change. So we had Professor Jonathan Rosenhead, uh, Joe Jolson from London Fieldworks, Darren Montag from Falmouth University, talk about soil culture. And then in the afternoon, we had biodiversity. That was the last panel. So we had Polly Higgins, who's a lawyer, who was talking about um, a lawyer for the, for the environment and for, uh, for the earth. Uh, Charlotte Couch, botanical researcher at the time from Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. And then um, a kind of double act with Ackroyd and Harvey and Dr. John Fanshaw talking about bird and life, bird wildlife, and also about their art practice. So um, it was, as you can imagine, it was quite a sort of a big experience for everybody. Um, this, uh, that's a piece from the evening performance. And then this is uh, the kind of one of the meals, uh, lunches, where we got together and we were talking and... Um, it brought people together in a really, you know, interesting way. I think food and eating is is a really kind of natural relation for for people to sort of discuss work. Um, this is I'll try and speed this up because I think I'm probably running over already. Um, so this I was invited by Emma Brasso, the curator from Herbert Reed Gallery, to kind of curate Gustav's show to tour it to Canterbury to the Herbert Reed Gallery. And uh, whilst it was there in October. Um, Gustav asked if we could do a special live tra transmission from the show to be broadcast during the Extinction Marathon Visions of Future at Serpentine in October 2014. So what I did is I organised the students, I got them in a minibus, they had to do two days of cutting, selecting, collaging articles across the gallery walls. So I, I split them up into groups of two and they had to kind of like manage, use the space. Um, and, and work on this. And it was very meditative, it was very sort of intense for them, but I think they really enjoyed the experience. So you can see there at the, the marathon that the students are diligently cutting, selecting, and uh, collaging in the space at Canterbury. Um, and then this leads me on to Remember Nature. So after we did the Facing Extinction conference, I was in visiting uh, Gustav one day uh, to talk about you know, how it went. And he called me an idealist. And at first, I didn't wasn't quite sure what he meant by that in terms of me. But anyway, later, I think that is kind of maybe a good thing that he called me that. So, um, but we started to talk with Joe Jolson about trying to develop something else. And um, so we had this conversation about trying to collaborate to work with artists, students, and the art and design worlds, universities, to create a day of action to remember nature. It kind of grew out of a conversation, and I think those things are really powerful, just having a conversation with someone. And if you're in the right place and the right time and you've got the right ideas, you can sort of generate something larger than yourselves. Um, they, I think Joe and Gustav had met uh, hans louis Gobrist and, um from Serpentine, and they discussed how that they could get involved. And then we invited Central St. Martins um, to launch the event um, on 4th of November. We also set up a, an online presence and uploaded images onto the website and it triggered responses from fine art courses from Cardiff, Middlesex Universities, Royal College of Art, Glasgow School of Art, City College in York, plus other individuals, galleries globally. 
So it was a kind of a public access project for all. And Joe and Bruce uh, from London Fieldworks made a lovely film of Gustav, which, which you can see in the show. And it was a, um, a well day of action. So, and they also discussed um, some of, I think they're all gone now, but they designed this with Gustav. This beautiful, I'm just going to open it up. So, so this is a kind of an artwork through Agnes Fee, one of the women. So we made several of the, uh, I think there's a thousand copies in there. So it's a, it's a kind of an artwork in itself. And then we have the kind of Queen Member Nature uh, manifesto here. So um, if anyone wants any more copies of these, I do have some more, but not with me here, but I have some in London. So. Uh, I could always give you some more. Um, so that, that, that kind of took on its... Um, the, the website's still there, and it hasn't really changed since then. So, but in there, we have some interesting um, comments uh, by people. I also, um, at the same time, I, got, I was doing a residency at Henry Moore Foundation Residency at University of East London, so I got the students there to do a show, a curated show, to remember nature. I'd also got my students at Farnham to do another curated show uh, in the same week. Okay, so just finally, I just thought I'd put in some images, just a piece of my own work, um, because I think it kind of relates to some of the things that I was working with Gustav. Um, I was doing a residency last summer in, in Denmark, in Fuhn, uh, near Odense, in Guest Atelier Hall of God. Um, and I was really drawn by this art park, which is where I made two temporary works. And this space here is um, incredible, uh, beautiful ancient woodland. But it's right next to uh, the E20, this, this major highway that goes across Thun, Uland, and Shelland. Uh, so you're really straight away when, when, when Pontus, you were talking about Gustav and the Shetland Islands and cars have to go destroying nature, I, you know, those things, kind of things, you feel like that when you're in this space because the vista is kind of corrupted and the sound of the cars and the, and the lorries. So I wanted to work with the end space where you can see the end of the vista there just looks like a nice space, but it's actually loads of cars racing past and on the left, these broken trees. Um, so I created a space um, in which people could get inside. It's designed for uh, one or two people to be inside and look through viewpoints, to look at the road and to think about nature and to look at nature and to think about the road. So a view of the forest and a view of the road. And you can see it from the road and you can see it from the forest. Um, but you can hear really loudly the, the, the motorway because it's so um, domineering. So inside I uh, spent a couple of days drawing um, I think people were a little bit scared of me because they didn't know what I was doing in there. Um, but what I drew was just like really quick sketches of what I saw around me. So cars, bird feathers, pylons, leaves, plants, bark scars. Um, and I just sort of put them together, just pinned them up really lightly so people could just take them away if they wanted to. Um, and I was kind of thinking about the landscape gardens that you find in um, Europe, you know, the sort of 17th century. And here, through the eye holes on the inside, you can see the motorway, you can see the cars go by. So it was a bit like a folly of our times. Um, I was thinking about that uh, geological era, the Anthropocene. So in the second, I made a second work uh, with this hand-sewn um, small sampler. Um, and it reads, I don't know if anyone speaks Danish here, <laughs> Den der Tia Samtuka, which says, uh, who stays, one who stays silent gives consent. Now this was given to me in a second hand shop by a man because I was asking him how much it costs but it's a tiny little sampler, it's like this. It's very, very poetic and it's very sensitive and uh, I kind of wanted to work with that and so I used that as a kind of idea of a work and took the colour from the forest because um, I, I was drawn to the beauty of the forest but also the, the contrast with the road. And I wanted people to think about these two views as one experience to try and fold t time and space into this kind of curtain which moved. I can't get this to open, but this is a little film. But basically this uh, piece called Korsteng, which <coughs> means cross-stitch, it's a sort of um, four metre by six metre curtain tied to the broken trees. Um, and it kind of moves like a big sail. And in the little cuts you can see, you can actually see the road behind. So it's a subtle act of you know, reappropriation, using something decorative in, a, in our relation to nature. Um, 
So that's where I'm going to end at this point. But um, it's it's been like those two years were very intense working with Gustav on these projects, and it's kind of like changed everything. I feel like it's changed everything from this point on. Um, you don't really once you shift, you don't go back to where you were. You sort of move forward. So yeah, thank you.